All right, I know y'all are ready for the break, so we're gonna quickly do this. And okay, steel. Um, on the boards, you will likely have a question about steel because there's just so many things they can ask you about dialysis. So it's gonna be how to create a fish, some sort of steel or a central venous problem. Okay, so steel, you can have steel. Um, everybody has technically physiologic steel, but whether or not they have clinical steel is when you treat them. You can still have steel with a palpable pulse. Okay, we're just gonna go through this real quick. Okay, pre-op workup, we already talked about this. Um, your pulse exam, blood pressure measurements. I'm on my tippy toes. This is, um, and then if you don't have a palpable pulse, think about maybe an angiogram or CTA. Um, patients who are female or have diabetes are likelier to get steel than others. Okay. Um, and Charu, actually, these were his slides from a couple years ago, so thank you. Um, but um, they can range from either just, you know, pain, numbness, weakness, not real, um, not uh, ma definitely manageable by the patient um, to, you know, tissue loss, right? So um, you definitely want to uh, look at the fistula and, augment, uh, you know, compress it to see if there's any augmentation in your distal pulses. Um, the SVS has reporting standards of different grades, zero being none to three being severe with rest pain and tissue loss. Um, again, talking about the spectrum of uh, uh, steel, again, don't ignore it because you can uh, very easily be sued for this if, you, if the patient loses their fingers, hand, uh, what not. Uh, tests to do, again, uh, look at your volume flows. Some, sometimes the problem is very high flow fistulas can cause this. Um, do a pulse exam, get PPG digit waveforms and see what the response is to fistula compression. And also think about um, neuropathy. So a lot of these chronic dialysis patients will have some sort of um, uremic neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy. And so I tend to get EMGs on them. And you'll find that a significant number have carpal tunnel as well if they've been on long-term dialysis. Um, here's just a picture of an ultrasound showing um, the retrograde uh, flow in the brachial artery due to steel. You can actually hear this with your Doppler uh, when you create one, um, and then when you aug when you compress the fistula, it'll go away. Um, again, some pictures of PPG digit waveforms. What uh, defines steel on this is an increase greater than 50% in velocity or 50% in digit pressure or amplitude defines significant steel. Um, so your next step, CTA or angiogram. The reason why I like angiogram is because you can, one, diagnose it as well as intervene if you need to. So you can confirm radiologic steel such as this. So take a picture and there's no flow to the hand. It all goes through the fistula. Um, and so in order to get pictures of the rest of the arm, you have to compress the fistula um, during uh, your angiogram to see that. Um, the second thing is intrinsic disease. Some of these patients are, again, they're not the healthiest, right? We have the uh, vascular patients are the, have the highest mortality in the hospital. Not because of us, thankfully, but just because of all their other uh, diseases. Um, and so here you have um, intrinsic disease. So that, you know, this just, with the fistula, it just tends to make their steel worse. Um, uh, the third thing is relatively uncommon and hopefully you will not see a lot because you will do a good physical exam in clinic and get blood pressure measurements and know if there's some sort of pulse differential, um, but you know, inflow disease, in which case if you're already doing an angiogram and an arch angiogram, you can treat while you're there. If they do have this, treating this alone sometimes can resolve their steal. Um, so management, if they have IMN in, um, a post op, so a little difficult, right? Because most of the time we try to do these under blocks, but if they have a, so you won't, they won't really know if they're having pain because this is, they still have pulses intact because what goes first in um, acute ischemia in any situation? What dies first? Nerve, right? Sure, yeah. Nerve, so IMN, so. Um, in this case, immediate reoperation to ligate the fistula. You don't want it to get to a claw hand, um, right? Because um, you'll probably get sued. Um, and defining, again, the steel syndrome of the nerves. They'll get severe numbness and weakness, and sometimes even compartment syndrome. And that's an example of a patient that had that, needing fasciotomies. Um, Okay, so management, if it's mild or moderate, so if they're saying, oh, I just have a little bit of numbness, tingling, um, then 
uh, that will usually improve. You can watch them, just follow up with them closely, make sure they see you in clinic. If this fails, you can think about different treatment options. So if they have a radiocephalic fistula, then um, you, you can uh, ligate the radial artery, but you need to make sure they have an intact palmar arch. This was a question on the boards, actually. Um, and how we how I do this is, uh, with again, with the angiogram, um, before you ligate it. Because if you ligate it and they have, say, an ulnar um, stenosis or occlusion, you're up at Schitt's Creek. Um, okay, so management. A proximal disease, we talked about the PTA, if they need a surgical bypass. All your op all of these diseases, can you can just ligate. I mean, worst case scenario, if they're just in severe pain or have tissue loss, you can ligate and, and create something new. Um, but other flow reduction procedures, banding, um, does this work? We have this flow meter um, in the OR, and I swear if you just do it as many you can get the flow reduction you want, just depending on how you flush the sheath. Um, but anyway, so I don't, I don't do that often. Um, the other options are if they're a high flow fistula, you can do a proximization. So what does that mean? Um, proximization means you're moving the inflow to the larger vessel. So, but this will only really work if you have a high flow uh, fistula because you could technically thrombose the whole thing by doing this. And we use a tapered graph, so four to seven millimeter tapered graph. So it reduces the flow and it also increases the resistance of the access. Um, another option is a Rudy. So um, that uses a smaller branch artery, one of the forearm vessels as the inflow and it preserves the other forearm vessel to feed the hand. The classic uh, uh, answer to the boards is doing a drill. Um, and so that uh, the thought process is it reverses the pressure sink, but the key word is seven to 10 centimeters where the bypass has to originate proximal to your arterial anastomosis, and you have to ligate the brachial artery, which just innately scares me by doing that, because what if the drill goes down that way? Um, so here's just some pictures of a drill. Um, usually you use the saphenous vein as your conduit. Um, so putting it all together, it's a bad problem. Um, you'll see this fairly often. Um, and what to do, don't bury your head in the sand. Um, make sure you have a plan for them um, because it, we don't want this to happen. Um, and again, so Severe, you can always ligate. If they're, they're mild, you can watch them, but just make sure they're compliant and they'll follow up with you. Um, and, you know, just because they've had a fistula for a while, you know, because usually it is early onset, it can also be delayed. So keep that in mind. That's it. Great job.